Hello everyone, uh, I'm Anup Suryan, I'm a research scientist at Merle, and uh, today I'm going to talk about sound to sight, audio conditioned visual imagination. This is joint work with Moitri Achataji uh, from UIUC. And um, before moving on to the talk, I'd like to thank the organizers for inviting me and to all the audience for turning up. So uh, to, uh, to set the context for this talk, let's, let us take a look at this video. <laughs> so you saw a man coming down the stairs and uh, then the video was blanked out, but you could still hear the sound and then you heard something. And um, as humans, uh, you, we, we won't have much of a difficulty in imagining what would have happened in the scene. For example, uh, we, we could imagine um, he might have slipped, uh, slipped on the stairs and fell down, or maybe he jumped maybe dramatically and fell down. There are several other possibilities. Um, but the one, one thing is clear that from the sound, it appears that he, he might have, he, he has definitely fallen down. And, um, and let's take the, the uh, let's see the video in full. <laughs> So yeah, our imagination actually matched with one of the possibilities uh, that um, in the way he fell down, but then as, uh, as we were certain, he fell down. Um, so, so that is precisely the, the task that we are after in this, uh, in this paper, in this, in this talk. Um, uh, our goal is to actually have the possibility of a machine learning algorithm to learn associations between, in, between an input video context, that is the initial part of the video sequence, and an audio sequence for the full video to produce plausible videos uh, that are reasonable. By reasonable, I mean uh, the generated video must be in sync with the uh, audio that is heard, and also the audio video pair must appear, up, uh, appear realistic. We also envisage the possibility of the model to produce multiple plausible generations, as usually there are so many stochastic components in real world contexts context that, uh, that generating just one sequence might not be uh, the one that matches with the ground truth. So more formally, our sound to sight task takes as input a few you know, initial frames of a video sequence and the full audio and, um, and our task is to hallucinate or imagine or produce plausible video sequences that are consistent with the audio. Now, this is just uh, not the only task that people have investigated or explored in this audiovisual imagination setting. Uh, there have been several recent works. Some of these are uh, some of these that I show here are just representatives of large, um, a large set of uh, such works. Um, so, for example, uh, so speech to gesture is uh, is about taking as input a speech uh, signal and trying to. To, to imagine, or I would say generate um, poses corresponding to the gesture of say a news anchor when he reads uh, some specific words, what could be the, the gesture. Um, so sort of, sort of like a, a regression between um, a speech signal and the gesture that might be associated with, the, uh, with that, that, that speech. Um, there is also a recent work of dancing to music, um, again, the idea is to actually generate human poses um, uh, that are uh, kind of correlated with uh, specific dance moves um, against, uh, against the music that is heard. There is also work of uh, generating talking heads that is taking a, a, a static image and a speech signal and then trying to make the, 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 st uh, the static image of a face uh, and being animated against uh, the speed signal to generate talking heads. There is also this recent work of uh, work uh, called Autofoli that takes as input a video signal and with, uh, or without any audio and the, the, the task is to generate the audio that is synchronized with the content of the video. For example, in this case, the, the host uh, galloping video and the idea is for the system to generate uh, galloping sounds that are synchronized with the motions of the motion motion of the legs of the horse. There is also some uh, previous works um, that tries to generate 3D talking heads from speech or audio signals. Um, so, uh, in uh, in the context of all these different uh, works, our um, proposed sound to sight task is a little different in the sense that. Um, 
we envisage or we, we look forward to generating um, pixel level video frames from sound. Uh, and that as a result is much more challenging. And, uh, and then um, our context is also kind of a little bit less controlled in comparison to um, say talking heads or um, 3D talking heads and stuff like that. Um, so so that, that makes our task a bit more uh, interesting, I would say, and, 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 and much more uh, realistic. Now, um, an obvious question in this context, which I've heard from people is like, what is this useful for? Um, so um, it could be useful for a variety of things, I would imagine. For example, occlusion reasonings, uh, reasoning. For example, say you have an indoor surveillance setting and uh, maybe there are regions of your, of your house where, uh, which is not visible to the camera, but you can still hear the sound. So maybe if something happens, for example, you hear the sound, and then you you kind of have some context, and maybe a baby crying or something, a sound of that. Um, so uh, can can the system automatically figure out the criticality of the of the situation um, based on some occlusion reasoning and what it saw, and maybe an arrangement of the room or uh, of or, or the indoor environment to figure out whether there is something some emergency that needs to be attended to or um, or, or maybe the situation is just uh, could just be ignored. Uh, the, this technology could uh, sound to side technology could also be useful for say generating missing frames in say a sports video where things happen so fast, and you want to actually have a slow motion or something. Um, not re um, so, not really in a, in a realistic manner, but uh, but maybe in a synthesis. synthesis. I, I, what I mean is. Um, there could be several ways in which you can actually generate these frames, uh, intermediate frames, which may match the, the given frames at some instances, but uh, there are, I would say, technical issues. But then the idea is that uh, generating higher frame rate uh, video sequences um, or, or maybe video compression, just take a few frames of your video sequence and then the audio uh, accompanying the video. And uh, is that audio sufficient to generate the missing frames in the sequence? Uh, so, so that could be another application. A third application could be like an augmentation to seeing through walls. Maybe people are already working on it. I'm not sure. Um, but uh, current uh, the, the systems that I'm aware of kind of uses uh, radio frequency spectrum to actually synthesize um, things that, that are behind a wall. But what if we, we use um, sound as well? Maybe uh, does sound provide any other um, uh, information that could be useful? Um, or it could just be for fun, like uh, synthesizing arbitrary stuff, uh, like can we generate the scribbles from just listening to the sound. Um, we were actually inspired by this, uh, this thought of, of synthesizing scribbles from sound, but then it turned out to be too hard to do. So we actually, in our uh, one of our data sets is, on, is painting data set, which um, tries to uh, recreate the actions of a painter uh, from the brush strokes that he makes, of sound of the brush strokes that he, he makes. Um, and um, uh, so that, I think that's, that's quite uh, an int intriguing thing to understand it. What, what, this, what a GAN, train, GAN network learns to generate by just listening to the, to the sound. Um, so to summarize the contributions of this work, so we study the problem of um, future frame generation from audio conditioned on the visual past. Uh, we propose a new deep learning model for this task that combines variational models, generative models, and multimodal transformers. Given that this is a new task, we present three benchmark data sets for evaluating algorithms. Um, and um, and uh, this, this work is, is based on this paper, Sound to Sight, Generating Visual Dynamics from Sound and Context, which will be published in ECC this year. Um, so uh, now let's get into the technical stuff. Um, so um, our sound to sight model is basically a GAN. It includes a generator that takes in the, uh, the, the frames as the scene frames as input um, and the full audio sequence. And the generator produces uh, the generated frames, obviously, and the generated frames are combined with the full given audio and passed on to the, this multimodal discriminator, which uh, also takes as input the real audio video pairs and the idea is, uh, is to is the discriminator should distinguish whether the real audio video pairs and the generated uh, frames and the audio audio match in distribution or not. So it will say whether it's real or fake, as in a traditional can can setting. 
Now our generator model, generative model consists of a prediction network, which takes as input uh, a previously generated frame or set of frames and uh, a stochastic noise vector um, and, and generates an X frame. Now this, this the important part is the stochastic noise vector is actually sampled from a, a stochastic, a multimodal stochastic uh, uh, neural network. Um, so the idea is that this, this network is actually generating a distribution from which CD is sampled, this, this latent vector is sampled. So the sampling process allows you to generate multiple uh, plausible futures, or if a sample gen generates a new future, future uh, if there is stochasticity involved in this, in this, in this generation model. Now the multimodal discriminate uh, stochastic network is um, is conditioned on an audio visual transformer network. So the idea is the audio from from this full full audio given as input and the scene frames, which are the visual part of the system. Uh, so this is um, uh, this uh, these two modalities are fused in a latent uh, space uh, de depicted by this audio visual transformer network that provides uh, conditioning on the stochastic network to generate distributions from which the CT is sampled. And then that CT controls how the future is being generated. Uh, now, once the, 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 the frames are generated, uh, the, uh, those, those are combined with the, with the provided audio and then passed on to the multimodal discriminator that distinguishes whether the sequence is, is, is real or fake. Now, um, the prediction network uh, is essentially an autoregressive uh, network um, that, uh, like I said, takes as input the previously generated frames and, uh, and the stochastic noise. And, uh, and then the generated frame is compared against uh, the, the ground truth frame during training time. And that, that is compared using the mean squared error to provide the training signal to, to train this uh, prediction network. Now, the prediction network is essentially an LSTM based decoder. Uh, encoder decoder. Um, uh, so um, the, the, the LSTM keeps track of the previously generated frames and using this, uh, using its, uh, its, uh, its latent uh, state vector. And, um, and uh, it, it takes as input the stochastic noise vector ZT and uh, XT minus one, an encoding of XT minus one, um, and, and then predicts the, the, the next frame. Now coming to the stochastic, the multimodal stochastic network, I would say this is the key component of this whole framework. Um, now the idea is uh, is is to have uh, so so this is essentially a Gaussian variational uh, model with a learned prior, um, and this is inspired by the work of Denton and Fergus. Uh, the key idea of uh, of this model is to learn the prior model for the prediction network such that a Z sampled from this prior will lead the, pre the prediction network to produce meaningful videos. So how, how, how to learn this on uh, the CT uh, or, or how to learn this prior model? The prior model is actually learned use, using a posterior network. So the, posterior, so the key idea is that the prior model takes as input X1 to XT minus one, that is a previous frame and the, uh, the, the audio signal, uh, it could be until T or uh, it could be um, till the whole, sequence, whole audio signal. But we found that maybe a one step look ahead is sufficient to actually have uh, the system predict the next frame. Um, so, so the prior model takes uh, these two uh, through a visual transformer and audio transformer. So the visual audio transformer produces um, self-attended uh, audio video embeddings which are concatenated and then uh, passed on to an LSTM. The LSTM produces the parameters, that is the mean and the, the covariance of a normal distribution through the reparameterization trick. And that becomes a prior distribution from which the ZT is sampled. Now, since this prior model has access to this audio signal from the next or the future, future uh, it, the audio signal uh, can, um, can help or can aid in generating this distribution, this, uh, this prior distribution, such that it can uh, it can generate the plausible future. Now, um, that is not the only thing. We have a posterior here, like I mentioned. So the, the, the idea of the posterior is to actually train the prior in a better way, uh, such that uh, it, 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 it is more amenable to generate uh, useful uh, future, future distributions. 
So what makes the posterior uh, more powerful than the prior is that the posterior has access to this, uh, this TH frame, that is XT, that is going to be generated. So this XT is the ground truth frame and XT hat is the one that is being generated. The posterior has access to this, uh, this, this frame. And, uh, but then, uh, so, so why not the posterior just uh, encodes and uh, encodes or memorizes this frame? Uh, it cannot happen. Um, because there is a KL divergence term between the prior and the posterior. The prior doesn't see this, this TF frame. So, so by minimizing the KL divergence, what we are, we are essentially trying to do is to, to make the prior behave as if it is a posterior and the posterior to, to see the, uh, to, have, to have seen the, the TF frame. It means that if, if you can minimize the KL divergence, the prior, essentially behaves as if it, it sees this, this frame and then it can uh, generate better um, uh, distributions for, for, for sampling distributions for ZT. And uh, so th that's essentially the idea of this whole pipeline. And once we train this in, an, uh, in, in, a, in a variational manner by minimizing the elbow bound, the prior and posterior uh, will, will converge to a distribution where the prior uh, kind of tries to behave like the posterior and then, then sampling from the prior is sufficient or is useful in, in, um, in influencing the, uh, this pr prediction network through the, this, uh, the CT to, to predict valid futures. So that's the, the essence of this whole framework. Um, so, um, So now, uh, now coming to the multimodal discriminator. Um, so, so we found that uh, the discriminator is uh, is a bit difficult to be trained. That is that is usually the case with all GAN models. But in this setting, we actually did a trick. So instead of actually generate uh, passing the arbitrary generated frames or sequences um, into the discriminator, we actually take the original video sequence and replace the TF frame by the generated frame. Everything else remaining the same and then pass it on to the discriminator. And, and then the discriminator is compared against um, the sequences of, of real audio video pairs. And then it has to distinguish whether it's real or fake. So this actually I, allows a bit more uh, stability to the training of the multimodal discriminator, which uh, we very clearly found to be very useful. The discriminator is not just a standard discriminator. It also has some specific uh, characteristics. Now, so it, it includes uh, uh, a check for the realism of the generated frame, but it also includes a term for ensuring that frame to frame motion dynamics is realistic and also whether the audio and video are aligned with each other. So the discriminator, uh, we, we feed the discriminator with uh, video, real world videos and uh, with their uh, audio shuffled and the discriminator uh, is trained to distinguish uh, that as a fake video. So using such a training, the, the discriminator has the capacity to actually distinguish whether the generated sequences are aligned with the, with the audio that is, that is provided as input. Now coming to the, uh, to the experiments, to empirically evaluate our algorithm, we present three new data sets. Our first data set is called Multimodal Moving MNIST with a surprise obstacle. This is a variant of the Moving MNIST data set, a stochastic Moving MNIST data set. It, however, has several novel extensions to it. So it includes a unique tone for every digit. And when the digit bounces off the walls of, of this canvas, there is, a, there is a, um, an instantaneous, to, instantaneous uh, tone heard as well. Um, to make this task more exciting, we actually introduce a white block in the unseen part of the, of the sequence. And this block is introduced somewhere in a random spatial location. Now, uh, when this digit, um, hits uh, these the, the walls of this or the sides of this this white box. Some other frequency is heard or tone is heard. The idea is actually um, to have um, uh, this uh, this our system or sound to side system to not only predict the trajectory of these uh, these digits moving across this canvas, but also to to figure out where the the box was introduced in the unseen part of the sequence by listening to the the bounces. Uh, the tone, to tone changes during the bounces. That I think is, is a very exciting uh, task to, uh, to, to validate whether our proposed system is working or not and, it, uh, yeah, yeah, and, and a task in general for audiovisual alignment.
Set drums. It's a it's a it's it's a it's taken from the drums category of audio set data set um, um, by pruning out some video sequences where, say, for example, the, the drummer's hands are not visible and stuff like that. Uh, it it has uh, we, we collected about eight thousand uh, training sequences, one thousand validation, one thousand test. Uh, each video sequence is about thirty frames per second and sixty four by sixty four video resolution. And uh, our third data set is this paintings data set, like I mentioned before, uh, where uh, each sequence consists of um, somebody painting um, uh, on a canvas, and uh, and we can hear the sound of um, of the breast strokes. And the idea is to actually uh, recreate the breast strokes by listening to the sounds from an unseen part of the video sequence. We collected about four thousand uh, eight hundred uh, training videos and five hundred validation and test and five hundred tests. From YouTube. Now, uh, this experiment shows uh, the audiovisual synchronization between the generated video sample and the moving MNIST uh, um, uh, audio. Um, uh, there are two things to watch out for in this sequence. In this in this video, one is, is this generated sample here, um, and this uh, SSIM plot. So when uh, this turns red, that is when the generations have started. And uh, one thing to know to watch out for is, uh, is that when uh, a block is introduced in this unseen part of the sequence, the SSIM, that is the structural similarity score, will will go down because uh, the, the the pixels associated with this with this block uh, cannot be recreated until the, the digit starts bouncing. But once the digit starts bouncing against the block, you you should expect that the the SSIM goes up. Because now uh, it the system has a better understanding of where the block the block is located. So let's see what happens. Uh, now the the the, uh, the the block has come up, um, and uh, and there's a sign box. There's a bit of delay. Uh, So once once a sufficient number of uh, of bounces happen against the block, uh, the SSI starts going up. So that that confirms that uh, the audiovisual synchronization of our method is pretty good. Uh, this is another qualitative ex experiment showing uh, some results of uh, of of this uh, of, of from our our um, our method against uh, some previous works which are similar. Uh, to ours, but not precisely in this task. This is another video from um, from uh, from the drums dataset. Um, we compare against uh, previous methods. You can see a bit of uh, saturation in this method and. Uh, and audio only doesn't work at all. Whereas ours is, is pretty much stable. This is, an, uh, this is a video from the paintings data set. You can see that there is a bit of a saturation in this method. Uh, I would say that uh, uh, the method of Dendon and Fergus, we don't uh, really, we don't use the, the audio. So there is no way the system can figure out uh, what is happening in the scene because uh, there, there is no other uh, cue other than just synthesizing the frames without any knowledge of what is happening in the scene. Um, the, we also can generate, uh, synthesize uh, diverse uh, generations. Uh, this is another example. Of that. And uh, we also compare our method uh, on quantitative uh, uh, quantitative metrics. So this is an SSIM um, comparison, and we find find that our method fares well in uh, almost all cases, um, in, uh, even in long long range generations. Uh, quantitatively, further, uh, we found that our method uh, fares well uh, in the diversity of generations. So this plot actually shows that as you increase the number of futures generated uh, 
by random sampling this latent, latent variable um, from the distribution, um, the diversity, intra, intra set diversity among this K is, is diversity is large uh, as promoted by this SSIM. So this is self-similarity SSIM within the set and it goes down, which means that diversity is large. And also across, um, I mean, matching against a given ground truth, how many, if, if you increase the number of futures, at least one should match the ground truth. And as we can see, as you increase the number of futures, we get a better match with the ground truth. Um, we also compared uh, uh, the block localization accuracy, that is how precisely can our algorithm predict the location of the block? And we find that uh, our ours is much better in predicting against other methods. Uh, the discriminator fooling rates provides um, an idea of the realism of the generated videos, and we see that that is also higher using our method. And we also did a human preference study, and about 90% of, of, the, of the humans uh, who participated in this study uh, chose our uh, frames against uh, the multi-frame method of, uh, of Ogicas. That's an extension of Ogicas's model, but uh, using multiple frames instead of, um, of one frame. Uh, and, and it, it was designed for, uh, for uh, talking heads application. So finally, to conclude, we presented a new computer vision and I would say multimodal uh, task uh, of generating videos conditioned on sound. We presented a novel uh, deep variational generative model for this task that has an audio look ahead to condition the video generation and it can generate diverse and plausible uh, video sequences. We presented three new data sets for benchmarking our algorithms on this task. And our extensive experiments demonstrated the state of, demonstrated state of the art results using our model again against uh, closely related baselines. So thank you so much. And uh, so these are some of the generations by our model. Um, I have muted uh, to avoid a cacophony, but uh, um, but please feel free to check out our paper and uh, the uh, the data set and more details of our work will be uh, available on this uh, link shortly. Thank you so much.